He talks a great deal and rags and deedy of a muscular punch that's incredibly speedy. This brash young boxer is something to see, and the heavyweight championship is his destiny. I'm not concentrating on Doug Jones. He's nothing but a bum. Son of Wilson is the man I want. As a fighter, I think he should be locked up for impersonating a fighter. I heard where he wants me to be a sparring partner, and uh, he's going to shove his glove down my throat. So that's officially announced to six. Mr. Musk fall in six. Al Lee and Liston, when you think about it today, in light of all that's happened since in Ali's life, you might have difficulty really putting a handle on the way it was. Following a Florida evening spent watching Cassius Clay score a narrow victory over Doug Jones, heavyweight champion Sonny Liston resumes training at Miami Beach for his return bout with Floyd Patterson. New York fight, Liston said that should he meet up with Clay, he's likely to be locked up for murder. Undiscouraged by his close decision over Jones, loquacious Cassius Marcellus Clay keeps in shape to meet the winner of the tussle at Miami. He beat Jones in a very controversial decision. And by it being so controversial, they needed another fight to give him enough stature to fight for the title. So they take Ali to England. They take him to fight a journeyman heavyweight by the name of Henry Cooper, the king of the empire. Everybody loved Henry. Now, the Liston fight is about to be signed and delivered. All he's got to do is get by Henry Cooper. I'm not training too hard for this bum. Henry Cooper's nothing to me. Uh, if this bum go over five rounds, I won't return to the United States for 30 days. <laughs> We're having all this hullabaloo. We got a, a big regal robe. We had a crown. So he said, well, the English have got a queen. We got a king. We got booed. My God, we got booed. The crowd was scary. I mean, they loved Henry Cooper. Here in round four, neither fighter has a commanding lead on the scoring. A crushing left hook sends Clay to the canvas. He got nailed that left hook. Thank God for the ropes. And he sort of slid down. Thank God, the bell rang. We brought him into the corner, started nailing with the cold water, give them, chewing them out, they're getting nailed. I see that was a danger of him predicting. Four, you know what I mean, five. The other guy is not cooperating. The other guy's looking to knock him out. Cassius Clay looks to have recovered from that thunderous left hook. Clay is all over Henry Cooper here in round five. Cooper is cut badly above the left eye. Cooper could fight. He looked good when he fought you. You had to be careful not to let him hit you with the left hand, which is what he had, because he'd knock your head off. But if you were careful, you would look as though you had climbed a very formidable mountain, and you'd knock him out because the guy would bleed. That's it. The referee says Cooper is too badly cut to continue. Cassius Clay continues on the road to the heavyweight title for the heavyweight championship. Liston was a great fighter. I seen him knock out a guy's teeth one night, and this is literally, it's the truth, there's no baloney. Hit him so hard, he dislodged the mouthpiece, and the teeth went with the mouthpiece. He cracked heads on picket lines, lived outside the law, and went to the Missouri State Penitentiary. Liston's scores with blockbusters and flying This is the fight that everyone has been clamoring for, and as of this minute, it is now official. The fight is on! The annihilation is on! Let's keep it on! Want to go now? I'll whoop you now! The crowd ain't big enough yet. It's going to take a good man to whoop me! You can look at me, I'm loaded with confidence. I can't beat me. I had 180 amateur fights, 22 professional fights, and I'm good as a girl. What chance did he have? I mean, how could this baby-faced kid that we know had beaten maybe two quality fighters in his entire life, how could he beat the prototype of the beast? I knew what he was capable of doing. I've watched him so many times, and I knew the talent of Muhammad Ali. All people saw was the big mouth. They didn't see him the way he worked so hard. We don't see anything 
that tells us this guy could be the heavyweight champion of the world. Other than the fact that a lot of us say, gee, it'd be nice if he was because we have a champion who can talk. Clay comes out to meet Liston, and Liston starts to retreat. If Liston goes back in his father, he'll end up in the ringside seat. Liston keeps backing, but there's not enough room. It's a matter of time. And Clay lost the boom. He was a joy with everybody in the gym. Kept everybody happy. Bodini, tell him, what are we gonna do? You gonna float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Ah, ah. rumble, young man, rumble. Ah, that's what we gonna do. You heard it. That's my trainer. He'll tell you. It was 1964 in Miami. Alley was one of the hottest young guys in the world. He, the publicity was fantastic. There was another group of guys who were just as hot called the Beatles who were on the Ed Sullivan show a week before that fight. Three kids and a big, another kid, four kids together, they clowned around the ring. It pays one all over the world. What's he gonna do? Kiss my feet at the beginning of the fourth round? I'll wait till the fight's over. Now I better kiss it before the first round because I ain't gonna be around that long. Oh man, this is jive, and I told you, why don't you put yourself on a limb like me? We had great scenes with the bus all over the country. In fact, he invaded Sonny Liston's house when Sonny Liston was living in Denver. He woke him up in the middle of the night. Come on, bear, come on out, you ugly bear. Do you think that Cash has really had a chance against this champion? She knows I'm the greatest, uh -huh. like she's the greatest. He proposed to me just before the first Liston play fight. He said, I want to marry you. I said, OK. And he said, you're going to have to discuss this with Brother Malcolm. As we got near to the fight, a new fella showed up, and his name was Malcolm X. It was a guy who was going to have a major impact on America and on Ali. We're giving the black people in America the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to lead us out of the clutches of one of the cruelest race of beasts that has ever walked on this planet Earth. When Malcolm said, Sister Dee Dee has to become a Muslim, my mother said, no, I don't think so. It was Malcolm X who converted Clay. And I wrote a story in the Herald Tribune that year, uh, which I believe was 1964, in, in which it revealed, or which I stated, that, that he had become uh, an active member of the Muslim movement. Ticket sales started dropping, he's a Muslim, he's a Muslim. They were thinking of possibly canceling the fight. I said, listen, Malcolm, if you don't get out of town soon, there's not going to be any fight. Ali's going to lose his shot at the title. I got the message, he says. I got the message. I'll leave, but I'll be back the night of the fight. All I want to know, come to the gym, keep training. We got two weeks to go. We're going to lick this guy. Don't let nothing go wrong. <laughs> By the time the Liston weigh-in took place, I was in agreement with the boxing people that we should get serious. This is for the heavyweight champion of the world. It's serious stuff. You don't want to make Sonny mad. Sonny's bad enough when he's not mad. And I agreed to that all the way up, and then he hit the door. And once he hit the door, show business. And I'm just out of school, like a freaking real cool. I got the jump, I got the jive, got the message, I'm alive, I'm a wife, I'm a wife. Like 900 men were there, press men, and they were all riding on Ali, scared to death. I wrote like everybody else, that there was no way that he could win this fight. I predict that tonight somebody will die and raise us from shock. But now, here's a 7 1 underdog. Second round, Liston. Liston and four. He's too powerful. I'm not going the second round. The real drama around this fight was whether this hysterical man-child was going to lose his nerve, whether he was going to show up, and whether he was going to get killed. I want to clean Bob. When they order to break, stop punching and step back. Good luck. Cash is on the move, as we see, looking to get Sonny to run. 
Benny has to set the pace. That's the way it looks at the outset. He's chasing. He's chasing. And Ali is moving backwards. And when it first happens, we think he's afraid. We don't realize that he is doing the most single important thing you can do when a boxer fights a puncher. He is determining the geography of the fight. Cassius, the challenger is jabbing all over body and a right hand. The best punch of the fight so far. Another jarring right hand that time, folks. Another one, Sonny Robble. Sonny Robble. Cassius has him hurt. Mahambu's dominating, listening, hitting him with the jab. Sonny has a big mouth below his left eye. He has a cut below the eye, and he's getting hit with all the punches in the book. We're going into Sonny's corner. They're working on the cut below the left eye. It's very so they use a coagulant, which is uh, highly effective and highly illegal, called Monsell. Some of it apparently got onto Liston's glove. Now, apparently, some of it got into Allen's eyes. So what happened when he came back? He kept shaking his eyes, shaking his eyes. He keeps saying, I'm blind, I'm not going out. He couldn't see. So I got the sponge, I ran water into the eye, I cleaned it with the towel right away. Now, there's all kinds of screaming. There's a dispute among the Muslims. A couple of brothers in the first row jump up. Angelo sold out, he sold out to the mob. He must have put something on the towel and done so. The referee was coming towards my corner to check it out because he's shaking his head. I made him stand up, and I gave him one instruction, run. And that's what he did. He ran. I see that Joe's eyes. His eyes are bothering him. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't know exactly what happened. They're yelling from Cassius Clay's corner. Something got in his right eyes. Uh, however, he's blinking badly. Sonny's got to try to pull it off. Sonny Liston put a horrible liquor on him in that round. The lesser guy would have folded, but then his eyes started to clear. He started doing a number on Liston again. Sonny, that put a stance. Easy target. Easy. In the sixth round, when Liston went back to his corner, Liston was a beaten man. I think maybe back of his mind, he thought he was going to get knocked out. What do you think is going on in Sonny's mind at this point? Well, I think Sonny now is beginning to worry now. At least his corners begin to worry because uh, I think that they feel now that Clay have all the confidence he needed to be Sonny. Liston didn't come up and answer the bell. The doctor stopped it because uh, they were complaining about the shoulder. They might be stopping it. That might be all, ladies and gentlemen. Get up there, Joe. Get up there. Get up in the ring. Suddenly, Ali breaks free, and he runs to the side of the ring that the press is on. And he jumps up on the ropes. He's saying, I fool you, and I fool you, and I fool you, and I fool you. I'm the greatest. I'm the best. I was born for this. My destiny. I'm busting out here. So great. I don't have a mark on my face. Yeah. And I upset Sonny Liston, and I just turned 22 years old. I must be the greatest. I, I told you. the world. I talk to God every day. The God's with me. Came over out of here. That's the right. right. I shook up the world. I shook up the world. I shook up the world. The next day, all hell breaks loose. Who's the greatest? Who you gonna fight, man? Who you gonna fight, man? Who's the greatest? You know that they don't say nothing. No justice, no justice at all. He said he was the greatest. Uh, all of the odds were against him. He upset the odds makers. He won. He became victorious. He became the champ. You can't call him a bitch. You can't call him a bitch because I didn't stop the fight. The doctor said the doctor said. Oh, I'm so pretty. I shook up the world. 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 Cassius is not my name no more. It's officially Muhammad Ali now. Muhammad Ali, right. Muhammad Ali, that's my name. There were many Americans who reacted 
adversely to the announcement that, that he was uh, becoming a member of, of the black Muslim movement and, and that he had changed his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. The head of the World Boxing Association. He was going to take Muhammad Ali's title away because Muhammad Ali did not think like they wanted him to think. The title does not belong to the title holder. The title belongs to the World Boxing Association. Clay has proven himself unworthy of being a champion and setting a bad example for the American youth. He knew that if people began to identify with Cassius and the type of image he was creating, they were going to have trouble out of these Negroes. Do you think it has anything to do with your being a member of the Black Muslims? No, the Black Muslim is the name you give it and the press give it. We're not Black Muslims. My religion is Islam, which means peace. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that any effort to bring about forced integration in this country between white and black people will result in bloodshed. I would not say the white man is a descendant of Satan, because that would be wrong. We didn't have a Satan before white man. So the white man is Satan himself. We want justice. We want to be free people. The nation of Islam, the main contribution to the Ali of the 60s was racial identity. Muslims came and said, no, you're wrong, you're beautiful. Black is beautiful. When you went to church to look at Jesus, you saw a white. When you look at the angels, you saw white. You look at Miss America, you see white. What's so bad about black? You have to understand the Louisville, Kentucky, into which Muhammad Ali, then Cassius Clay, was born. He grew up into a very stratified town, went to an all-black high school. He was a good child. Uh, one afternoon, I was downtown, and I took my son into a store, and he got thirsty and wanted a drink of water, and they wouldn't give it to him. And then he started crying, and it really hurt him. He hardly was suffering for the way he was raised. You know, uh, family was not poor. Guy says, Clay, who doesn't come from a ghetto, comes from a very good family, very church-going family. Muhammad and I was born Christians. We were raised Christians, uh, were Baptists of the Baptist faith. I took him to Sunday school and church every Sunday. He was a very happy little boy. And Muhammad Ali has took my father's personality. My dad was very exciting. If he talked, he, was, he could make you laugh. And uh, that's where Muhammad Ali gets his flamboyancy from. My mother's sort of quiet, loving, kind. When Ali was a baby, the first word he ever said was Gigi. So one day when he got older, he says, Mother, you know why I said Gigi? I said, why? He said, that meant I was going to be in the Golden Gloves when I got older. Chicago Golden Gloves. Heavyweights Jimmy Jones and Cassius Clay square away. Clay puts on a display of dazzling footwork. They didn't even let the black kids fight in the Golden Gloves till I took over. I was a man and put them in the Golden Gloves. He was kind of a skinny-like kid. Uh, the first fight I put him in, he weighed 89 pounds. Muhammad Ali was 12 years old. 1953, we went to this festival at the big Columbia gym on, on 4th Street. Rode his bicycle, and while he was in there getting his candy and balloons, somebody stole his bike, and so he was very disturbed and wanted to see a policeman. They said, there's a policeman right downstairs. So he come down there and saw me. He didn't even know the gym's there, he said. He was talking about whooping whoever he found and stole his bike, and I said, well, you better learn how to fight first. Next day, we came back to the gym, learned how to box, and from that time on, we've been boxers. He very seldom ever missed, always. He was there when I got there, and he was there when I left. He's a very devoted kid. You can fight, when it's all over, he'll be laughing with you, playing with you again, talking with you, kidding. You know, but he was always serious about what he did, and that was boxing. He had a mouth on him then, too. <laughs> After he beat me, right after he was announced the winner by the referee, he was going to be the world's greatest. He was the heavyweight champion of the world already at 12 years old, 88 pounds. But his predictions come true.
He always told me that someday he's going to the Olympic and bring the gold medal back. In Rome, he was very much a, a pro-American presence. America's kind of black. I wrote an article for Newsweek how young Cassius Clay had become the unofficial mayor of the Olympic Village. Everyone loved him. He exuded charm. Any of you boys plan to turn pro? Well, yes, I, would, uh, I was thinking about turning pro. Uh, for an example, right now I'm the world's amateur light heavyweight champion and I'm rope. So it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Louisville had produced an outstanding athlete. And this group, which ultimately became known as the Louisville Sponsoring Group, said, look, why don't we back him and why don't we try and be a model for how a young boxer should be handled? One of the founders of the group, Cassius Clay, I'm also his manager. The Louisville Sponsoring Group uh, was composed of Louisville's uh, top business people. Worth Bingham, assistant publisher of the Courier Journal and Louisville Times. I had not been a fight fan, but as soon as I saw Cassius Clay, I mean, that I became one right then. Only because he was just such a beautiful specimen. When I first had a meeting with the Louisville sponsoring group, they interviewed me and asked me how I would handle them. I said, very slowly. I'm not a fast guy. I take my time. I worked on his jab. His jab was, a, was a, a flick when I first got him. I used to pull from punches, a herky-jerky type of style. But the guys wouldn't hit him because of his quickness, his agility. He had eyes like a snake, never blinked. My answer to them critics was, hey, he does everything wrong, but turns out right. With each and every fight you have with your fighter, you learn a little more about your fighter. Lonzo Johnson was a very, very good fight for Muhammad Ali. Learn that don't lead with a left hook, or this guy would counter a left hook. I had an expression with Muhammad, don't hook with a hooker or go out with a hooker. You can't win either one. There goes Clay on the floor. The Sonny Banks fight, he got nailed that left hook coming in. Yes, that was my first time out there as a professional. And uh, as you know, I think that I'm the greatest, and I'm not supposed to be on the floor, so I had to get up and put him on out in four, as I predicted. Anybody would have got knocked out with that punch but Muhammad Ali. That's when I saw that night how great this kid was. As he progressed, he got to be sharper because he knew what the media expected. When we fought Jones, we tried a new bit there. I got a two-inch piece of tape and put it over his mouth when we were going to the weigh-in. Didn't talk. It worked for about 15 minutes, and he pulled it off. I got to talk. I predict that by the end of 1963, I will be the youngest heavyweight champion in history. And the difference between 60 and 64, when he fought Liston, was the culmination of growth and training. He didn't drink. He didn't smoke. And, you know, for a long time, they thought Muhammad was effeminate because he didn't chase women. I said, you guys are crazy. He's an old man. He just wanted to be a fighter and he wanted to be a champion. You think your personality has changed since you've won the title? Well, I'm a little more relaxed and uh, settled. As you can see, I have a pretty wife here. He asked me to marry him five minutes after I walked in his door. I wasn't thinking, but I knew I wasn't busy, so I said, fine, why not? We were married, according to how he related to his religious beliefs. You jump over a broom and you're married. Muhammad Ali and I were married twice. The second time we were married in a judge's chambers in Gary, Indiana. I went right into camp with Muhammad Ali, training, because he was getting ready for another fight. They are now approaching us on their horses. What do you say, stewardess? You mean the plane is going to crash? Say a prayer, recite a Bible verse. Well, I don't know no Bible verse. Just do something religious. Mm, I'll take up a collection. <laughs> so now we're all up in Lewiston, Maine. The second alley listing fight.
Mohammed and I had very little time to be alone, other than at night, because he was always surrounded.